Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Michael Mann, the owner operator of Studio M Mastering. So you want to build a home recording studio. Well, today we're going to go over the five must have for building that home studio. We'll get to it right after this. So before we kick into the five must-haves for building your home studio, let me introduce myself a little bit. My name is Michael Mon. I own and operate a studio called Studio M Mastering. It's based out of my home. Uh, I'm an affordable mastering studio. Uh, I've been doing audio-related or music-related things since 1992 full-time with a few minor part-time things here and there during some of the ebb and flows of life and, and things like that. For the last 16 years, I've been working in a corporate setting doing corporate post or corporate production, doing all kinds of things, broadcast, film, audio post-production for video, audio post-production for film, YouTube videos, promotional videos, internal trainings, all kinds of different things. Uh, during that time, I've been operating Studio M Mastering out of my house. And just recently, I've decided that, you know what, it's time. Get this channel started. Let people know that there is something other than being famous. Uh, you can make a living at doing audio. Now that you've gotten to know me a little bit, uh, we'll get back into the video and go over the five must-have items for building your home studio. So here we go. You ready? Item number one. Drum roll, maybe? No. But here we go. Item number one. We're assuming you have a computer or you have an iPad or something along those lines. So we're going to start with your DAW, your digital audio workstation. That is item number one in building your home recording studio. Um, now, the type of interface, the type of software, that's going to be your budget, what you want to do. Uh, that's, it's, all those things are going to make your decision for you. With today's audio interfaces that are as inexpensive as around $40 to $50, and then they can go up to multi-thousand dollar interfaces, uh, you can build a home studio. Back when I started, I started with a four-track cassette recorder from Fostex. It had four faders, four pan knobs. That was it. Um, nothing fancy, but I could record four separate things. And that was huge. And I bought that back in 1988. So I was a junior in high school when I bought it saved up all my money from being a grease monkey and and bought that four track recorder and was able to double or triple the amount of money I was making being a lube technician at a local oil change place. Uh, so I was able to record local bands with that. Four mics, four tracks, man, the world was awesome. Today, you can have it, your interface. This one here, it's a two-channel interface. Um, it's a discontinued one, but you can record two things at the same time. But it's now the software that's the big component of this. The software, and depending on what you want to choose, you know, there's Pro Tools, which I use. There is, there is Cubase, Nuendo, Logic, Audition. Uh, Reaper, so many different programs. And we're not going to be program specific, but it all depends on your budget, what you're interested in, because there are some that are free and some that cost money. But if you're looking to build a home studio, that's the biggest part to research. And if you have questions, leave a comment down below. I'll try and answer, help you out. But the biggest thing is which interface am I going to choose to, com to go with which piece of software? For me, Pro Tools, been using Pro Tools since 
roughly uh, 96, 97. So pretty long time. This particular one I've had laying around for a long time. It's great. I take it mobile with me with a laptop and do a variety of different things. Can do record voiceover, ADR, all kinds of stuff. So this has been a valuable, valuable tool over the years. It's now end of life and it's probably time to find a new portable interface. But little guy, two inputs, two outputs, uh, headphone outs, just a really, really great interface. I'm able to record a variety of things with it, uh, taking it to record a piano at somebody's house, variety of different things. But it, the software is where I think is the more important part. The interface is great, and those can be upgraded over time, but the choosing the software, that's gonna be one of the biggest things. Do you like the way that it operates? Does it have the features that you're interested in? Um, how many tracks are you interested in recording? And at first, you're probably not gonna know a lot of these different things. But you will know, am I a singer-songwriter? Do I, am I gonna be doing acoustic instruments? Am I going to be doing loops? Am I going to be doing all MIDI? Those are the types of things that will determine which software that you choose. So, number one, the DAW, choosing of the DAW. That is step number one. All right, now number two. The number two most important thing, in my opinion, for building your home studio. You've covered the DAW. You now know how you're going to record, what you're going to, how many inputs you can have simultaneously. The number two option in every studio needs a microphone. This is an inexpensive microphone from Audio Deutschcraft. It's a large diaphragm condenser. Microphones can range anywhere from about 20 bucks to, you know, 25, 30,000 if you're going for some of the real vintage microphones. Uh, and it all depends on budget. Now, a Shure SM58, SM57, good starting point. There are some that are very similar from Audix, uh, Earth, like uh, CAD, Sennheiser, Bayer Dynamic, all the different brands. There are a ton of microphones out there. And so it's all going to be up to you. Everybody has their preferences. Some people hate Shure microphones. Some people hate Neumann microphones. Some people hate AKGs. Uh, personally, every microphone is a tool. So whatever microphone it is and whatever microphone you have the budget for, whether it's the $20 microphone on up to that $30,000 Telefunken 251 vintage, you know, the granddaddy of microphones, basically you put that on anything and it's gonna sound pretty darn good. And then if you're going to be recording drums, you're going to be recording pianos, things like that, you're probably going to want more than one microphone. So you're a singer songwriter, you record your guitar, you record your voice at the same time. So two microphones might be a really good option. Uh, you're a piano player and you have a really, really nice piano. Maybe you need three. Um, you're doing hip hop, you're doing electronic music. Maybe you only need one microphone and the rest is all sample based instruments. So all of that is is being created through your MIDI and having one decent microphone to capture the vocals or vocal samples or different things like that, a single microphone will work. So number one, DA. Number two, microphone. Number three, and this is a big one, something to listen to it on. Headphones are gonna be your least expensive, and a really, really good option for most home studios. And I say that because a set of headphones, you're not dealing with room acoustics, you're not dealing with, uh, you know, inaccurate speakers. If you have a good set of headphones, and I would suggest getting the ones that are in that 100 to above range, you know, AKG, Sony, Sennheiser, 
The ones I just showed you are the AKG 270s. They're about 200 bucks, but they're a really good headphone and you're gonna wanna get closed back. The difference between closed and open is the closed back has less leakage so that if you're recording something, the microphone's not going to pick up that headphone bleed and bleed into your tracks. So you're gonna want a closed back headphone and that will help you. It will help you being able to mix. It will help you being able to record. Um, yes, ultimately a set of speakers and a nice acoustic treated room, but we're just starting out. We're just starting the home studio. So a set of good quality headphones are, is my number three. Um, there's not much else that I can say about that, but the number three would be a good set of headphones. So now we've gone through number one. You've got your DA. Number two, microphone or multiple microphones. And you also need a stand with that microphone. That's always a really important thing. Microphone cable, microphone stand. And something with your headphones, you are going to need a headphone extension cable. Uh, guaranteed. I don't care what size room you're in. Usually the headphones have about a six foot range. Um, but there are times you've got a noisy computer, you've got, you've got different things. Maybe you want to put somebody, they're recording vocals and you're having them in the closet with the clothes to keep some of the reflections of the room down. Done that a couple hundred times in my life. Um, having tw a 25 foot headphone extension to get from your interface to the, uh, to the closet is a really good thing. So get your DAW, get your microphone with stand and cable and multiple microphones with stands and cables. And then you've got your headphone with headphone extension. Number four, we're here. We're to number four. Now, number four, you're going to be like, oh, duh, but number four, an instrument. What is your main instrument? Uh, for me, drums are my main instrument. That's what I was, that's what I played in bands. Being the drummer, seems like a lot of drummers end up in the technical realm. Um, but for a lot of people, they play guitar, they play keyboards, they play bass. They're, they're using their home studio to write songs, to you know, collaborate with the band members. However you're building your home studio, you need an instrument. So that's, that's your number four, is an instrument. Now, the best quality instrument you can afford, that's probably a really, really good thing to have. So the quality of the instrument generally translates to a better recorded sound. So if your main instrument is your voice, well, the quality of your voice is going to, going to affect the sound. Have you trained? Are you using your, your, your lungs and your throat and all of the different things to create that sound? Are you using that properly? Guitar, a $20 guitar versus a $500 guitar versus a $1,000 guitar. 500 to 1,000, I don't know if there's that much of a difference, but you get to that $5,000 point. Amazing. I got a chance when I was early in my recording career, got a chance to record a well-known classical guitar player. And he could make any guitar sound amazing. But when he pulled out his custom made, and I think it was probably about a five, $6,000 guitar, just a few strums and plucks on that thing, and in the room, wow the most amazing thing. And so my job became really, really easy because that guitar was amazing. And it translated to the microphones. And all I had to do was put, a, put the microphones in the right spot. And I had a great recording. So good instrument, as good as you can afford. Everybody's on a budget. I'm on a budget. So that's the thing. Microphones are the same way. The, generally speaking, the higher dollar the microphone, the better it is.
but that is not totally rule of thumb because each microphone has a different purpose. So, number one, your DAW interface software. Number two, microphone or multiple microphones with cable, with stand, you need those. Number three, you've got headphones and you definitely want a headphone extension. That 10 to $15 that that inexpensive headphone extension is, so worth it. Definitely get it. Number four, a quality instrument, as good as you can afford. Number five, and here we are, this is the last and the final thing that you need when you're first starting out building your home recording studio, and that's you. I know it sounds cliche, it sounds stupid, all of that, but it requires you. It requires your talent, your talent as the musician, your talent as the engineer, your talent as the technician, uh, you're an IT person because you're running a DAW, you're, you're a musician because you're recording your music um, that you're creating because I'm assuming that's why you're building a home studio is you want to record your own music. And number three, uh, you're, the, you're the engineer and it requires you and your desire to learn to develop that talent to get better. There's so many areas every day I learn something. I learn something new on a regular basis. So if you really like what you heard here today, please hit that like and subscribe button down below. Uh, I'll be coming out with new videos every week, different tutorials, different tips, different tricks, gear reviews. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna be dealing with uh, audio post-production. There's not very much of that here on YouTube. Uh, we'll do some music mixing, some music mastering. Uh, we'll be doing some game sound design, a variety of different things. All the things that I've had different experiences in over the past 28 years. So again, my name is Michael Mon. I'm the owner operator of Studio M Mastering. And yeah, leave a comment if you have any questions. I would love to hear from you. I will try and answer those questions. And again, Thank you for being here.